I've seen things online, like on on Pinterest, where people get a nice plant, and then on the planter itself, they put the dog's like a uh, collar around it with their name tags on it. You could do that, and you can hang the little paw print. Yeah, or stick the little paw print on the planter as well. Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to think of different ideas. They're sort of like I wonder if we can look some up because there's like a whole, like I said, like there's a whole bunch of different ways that uh... can make a necklace. <laughs> There's like, there's super creepy stuff. Even for humans, I find there's like super creepy stuff. Like my, uh, there was a good friend of my mom's once who carried, who would wear her husband's ashes uh, on her at all times. I have a necklace with my brother's ashes. You do? Do you wear it? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. I think. Is it creepy? I think. (laughs) Well, it all depends, right? It means different things to different people. Like some people find that creepy. Some people don't. Uh. (laughs) I'm pretty sure Heidi just called me creepy. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to Let's Boop Snoots. I'm Heidi. I'm Vero. And we have another depressing episode for you today. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so grab a glass of wine or something grab a box of <laughs> tissues i'm sorry to start off uh the new year on such a, a sour note but it's an Im- important story to share mm-hmm. and I'm happy gonna... new year happy new year all of our snoot boopers <laughs> <laughs> everybody everybody hope you had a nice holiday with your dogos mm-hmm. and uh looking forward to the exciting experiences to come yes i hope they're exciting oh i hope so too um so um again I'm, i apologize to start on such a morose uh terms but we we unfortunately in terms of doggos did not have the greatest holiday uh we lost um our family member miss becky booze who you've heard me talk about on the show oh, becky um I have two dogs, Gibbon, a Weimaraner, and Becky, who was a rescue hound of some sort uh, that we got years ago. Becky was uh, close to 13 years in age. And I will tell you our holiday tale of the end of the life of Becky. And I will try to do so (laughs) (laughs) tear-free. So, um... Right before Christmas, going so right going into the holidays, um, I noticed that Becky was barking and trying to go in and out, out, in and out, in and out, in and out. And I was watching her in the yard and she kept squatting to pee and then she'd walk a couple of steps and squat to pee again and walk a couple of steps and she just was squatting like crazy. So I took a look at that behavior and I interpreted it as being a UTI, a, a urinary tract infection. Um, cause that's kind of what happens to humans too. It feels like you have to pee all the time, but you're not necessarily producing any urine and it's cause there's an infection in there that's inflaming everything. And it's just like all your sensors down there are telling you, you need to pee when in fact you don't. And what you need is some antibiotics and there's n- no home remedy for that folks. You need some antibiotics for you. You can't squirt <laughs> some apple cider. <laughs> yeah. Apple cider up the nethers is not going to fix this one. <laughs> A little apple cider douche. <laughs> it's not going to help you out here. It would probably actually really hurt. <laughs> probably, so, we, Especially if we, it's inflamed. Yes, we will not. We will not recommend that. So um, luckily enough, I was able to get her in uh, to my vet the following day. And um, so took her in. I told them what was happening. They asked about uh, all of her other like health stuff. And then just, like things seemed to be fine. So took her in. They were able to give us some antibiotics. I was like, great. So that was on the 23rd. Um, you know, knowing that they were going to be closed probably on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and so on and so forth, blah, blah, blah. So we brought her home and we started her on the antibiotics. Um, And I will remind everybody, um, uh, there's some learning little points during this uh, story too, that pilling a dog is not always the most (laughs) easiest thing to do. (laughs) Um, And one of my previous dogs that we had, you could roll a pill up in like cheese, filet mignon, like at like the best stuff. And he would gobble it down and then go and spit out the pill (laughs) at the very last second. It was almost like a magic trick. Um, 
so for the dogs that do not <laughs> readily take pills, um, you, they're, what you have to do is you basically have to sit them down. You have to like pry their mouths open, like at the teeth, and then their tongue starts to like protrude out, like blah, 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 like stop it, stop it, stop it. And when the, you have to time it so what the, when the tongue comes out, you throw the pill as far back into the throat as you can and then hold their face up in the air and rub their throat and it forces them to swallow it down. Good Lord. I know. So <laughs> little, little tip for you there. Or if you're lucky, there's other things available to you too, such as uh, pill pockets and um, stuff like that, uh, that where your dog can readily just, just quickly eat the pill. And you know, hopefully you don't have like too many, too many things wrong with it. I decided to try with Becky cause we had never really given her pills before to, uh, put it in her food and she w would just, she was eating it right up with her kibble. So it was perfect because she had to take it 12 hours. So she would give her one in her breakfast. We would give her one in her dinner and it was, um, 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 and like no problems whatsoever. So we started on a couple of days of antibiotics and immediately we noticed that she started to look better. So she was urinating uh, totally fine. Everything was going really well. We had a friend staying with us during the holidays. And then a couple of nights later, um, I was at work and my friend texted me. She said, oh, she's starting to do the, the multi-squat PP dance <laughs> out in the yard again. And I was like, oh no. Like, and I was like, maybe the antibiotics aren't strong enough. Like, was she spitting them back out? Like, I was starting to think, like, what's going on here? So uh, the following morning, she, um, uh, I let her out. She, she took her pills, no problem. She went out to the yard, had a huge pee and no problems, like, whatsoever. And um, she seemed to be normal. So I was like, oh, maybe it was just a one-off or maybe she still had a bit of irritation. That sort of thing. Wasn't too sure. So, um the next day the vet called to to ask how she was doing and i told them about the multi squats again they were like okay well well if everything seems fine that's great if anything gets worse or whatever just let us know so in the meantime i had heard on the news and i'd seen like on social media and stuff that the emergency vets in the city where we live uh were experiencing staffing problems due to covid situations and that they they were not they did not have their emergency services available. Mm -hmm. And I just ha happened to pick that up like in my ongoings of life. So a couple of nights later, so it was like right before um, New Year's Eve. So the day before New Year's Eve, um, I, again, I was at work and um, I texted my son to say, hey, um, did you feed the dog and give her her pills? And he said, oh, well, she she didn't uh, eat her dinner. And that morning when I got up with her, again, she ate her breakfast, no problem, took her pills, no problem, went outside, had a big pee, no problem. So he said, oh, she's not eating her dinner. So I was like, uh-oh, maybe she's starting to not feel so good. And again, I'm questioning, like, the strength of the antibiotics and, like, how things are going. So um, I came... Uh, Oh, yeah. So I said, well, make sure that she takes her pills, at least like put it on a treat or something. And my son said, no, she ate her pills just fine, just not her dinner. So I was like, oh, OK. So then a couple of hours later, my friend who was staying with me texted me and she said, I don't think Becky's feeling very well. And unfortunately, like I was unable to take a phone call or anything at work because work was super busy. And I said, well, I'm going to be home in an hour anyways, and I'll see what's going on. So I came home and unfortunately, Becky, my friend was right, was really feeling unwell. So again, like we've, we've talked about this on the, on the other episodes in the past, dogs display pain in different ways in excessive licking, uh, pacing, panting. You can sort drooling. of really tell that drooling and which, and she was doing all of the above. Uh, she was whimpering like every once in a while. So I was, and she kept asking to go outside and it's winter here right now. And it was nice and cold. So she would go out and she would stand there for like 20, 30 minutes. And this really weird pose where it looked like she either needed to vomit or take a poop, but she wasn't able to do either. She wasn't trying to squat. So I was questioning, like, does she have a kidney stone? Is there a blockage? And if that's the case, like that's, we're in big trouble. Cause when your bladder can not evacuate your bladder just fills up like a balloon until it eventually bursts and then you're in big time trouble so I immediately called the emergency vet 
who told me that they were not able to accept any patients, (laughs) which was really concerning because she was, like I said, very clearly uncomfortable. Um, So I had remembered that I had had some leftover pain medication from my last dog when he was like at the end of his life. So I went to the cupboard and I was hoping I could give her some pain meds so that she could at least settle and sleep until my vet was open again the following morning. So I gave her a dose of, um, it was tramadol, which is like an, uh, somewhat like of an opioid. It like is a painkiller and, and, um, anyways, and it didn't really do much for her. So I spent the whole night up with her, just trying my best to keep her comfortable. Uh, again, she kept, um, uh, wanting to go outside. She would go and stand outside for 20 to 30 minutes back inside again. And we did this throughout the whole night. And that was an awful feeling because it's, it's hard to see like a helpless animal mm-hmm. in, in, in clear discomfort like she was. So, um, I called my vet the first thing the next morning. They said absolutely they could take her in like within the hour. And um, I was exhausted from being up all night. So I sent my husband to take her to the vet and I spoke to them and said like we were okay with getting some imaging and stuff. But my husband and I had the unfortunate conversation. And again, like different people, like their pets mean different things to them. And you just both have to be, if it, like it's a family making this decision or you're making it with your husband or your co-owner of the dog or whatever situation that you're in, um, you need to have a discussion about how far you're willing to go medically. And especially when they're at the end of their life. And again, we've spoken about this in previous episodes um, where for me, it's like, uh, as the dog gets older, I'm willing to spend less because their outcomes aren't going to be as good. You know what I mean? Like Gibbon mm-hmm. is four years old. If he required a $5,000 operation, absolutely, I would I would be willing to invest that money because you know that he's young and healthy and he's going to do well. With Becky, she's like pushing 13. She's a, She has other issues that we weren't sure if they were cancer or not, that again, the outcomes to to those were like thing like extreme measures that I was unwilling to do like on an older dog. So I I said to my husband, depending on what it is that's wrong with her, like this may be the end of the line. So he agreed with me. We were both on the same page. So he took her to the vet and they did an ultrasound and an x-ray. And sure enough, she had a huge mass on her bladder that was obstructing um, the outflow to her bladder. So, and when I had gone in to say goodbye, her bladder was literally the size of her entire abdomen and like ready to blow. Yeah, it's very big. And she was, she was like the vet knew exactly that she was in a lot of pain. So they said they offered to us that they could send her to another city yeah, that's how that's how bad wow. of shape our vets are in for a uh, to put in a catheter, and um, that alone was going to be uh, close to three thousand dollars, and that they could take more imaging, and then decide if we wanted to go ahead with the surgery, which again was going to be close to ten thousand dollars. So uh, the the bill was uh, matching her age, <laughs> in yeah. thousands of dollars, unfortunately, and again. Um, so my husband said, you know, he called me and said, this is what they found. It's decision time. So I said, well, I think we both know uh, what the answer is here. So he asked the vet. And again, our vets currently are on a are on COVID protocol. So you can't even go into the vet uh, with your animal. So you have to drop them off at the front doors and wait in the parking lot and get take phone calls from the veterinarian and stuff like that. So my husband asked, um, I asked him to ask them if they could put in a catheter and just drain the bladder so at least she's comfortable and that she could come back home and then our family would have time to say goodbye but uh they said no they were not unable to do that because it was because of whatever reasons either the mass was in the way or like it was it needed to be a surgical like not just like a regular catheter and they just didn't have the capacity to do it at that veterinarian and that again they had to send her somewhere else to do that so they said no that wasn't an option so my husband said well then can my family come to at least say goodbye so they said well how like how far do they live because she is very uncomfortable and he said 10 minutes away and they said absolutely 
So I went and I woke up. Uh, I have two young boys. They're teenagers. And woke them up and asked them if they wanted to come and say goodbye. And they said, yes. So we got into the car and we went in and we did the whole goodbye thing. So I think I described the process with um, my last dog. So it was same vet, same room. Our second visit now there. Yeah. They do it. They They're do a so really good. They are. They do a really yeah. good job. They really do. So it's this nice little room with like leather couches in it. They bring in a blanket and put it on the floor. They come in and they tell you exactly what to expect. So they already have an IV in, in place on the dog. For Becky, they gave her some some medication because she was just in so much pain. So mm -hmm. she was a little bit drowsy to begin with. And then they said they would bring her into the room. They would give us like a moment. And then they have this little button on the wall. Like it's like a doorbell. And that, that when we were ready that we could push the button and they would come in and they would. And then they explained to you the medications too. So they, she had the, the veterinarian had three syringes. So like one is propofol, which is like just like a relaxing, like send you to sleep medication. And then she would flush it through with some saline. And then she had another syringe that was full of, um, it potassium? basically starts. Yeah, it must be potassium because it stops like the heart and lungs. And yeah. then they flush that through. So it's like she's asleep. She's comfortable. She doesn't have any pain. And then they give her the stuff that physically stops like the heart and lungs and uh and then they get then they leave the room and they let you take as long as you want and then you push the button again and then you you can leave and also they they and the good thing too is that they came in beforehand too to with the bill so that you could pay so that as soon as it was all over and done with because you know you're going to be like in a horrible emotional state and we were <laughs> that yeah. you can just leave you without having go. yeah Take, take care of any of that stuff so they brought in the, the the like they came in they explained everything they told us the cost involved they brought in the machine we paid and everything and they said okay uh we'll go get becky for you so they went and got becky and she was very drowsy and so we just like pet her we told like said our goodbyes we took a moment and everything and she laid down on the on the blanket and we pushed the button the vet came in and did oh yeah and so yeah the other thing i wanted to just mention too was the options available so they said you could do a private cremation you could do like a group cremation like with other dogs yeah. and then they would you would have options of like different receptacles to put the ashes in like there's like little pins <laughs> there's like a little urn there's like all these different things and stuff like that and they said, or you can just go with the standard, like, disposal of, like, uh, of the animal, which is what we opted for. And then they said, like, at no charge, they take a nice little paw print and mm -hmm. they would send that to us. So I don't remember them telling us that with scraps the last time. And I think, like, I told this story in another episode that we did where, you know, weeks had gone by and, like, we had grieved the loss of our, that was, like, our first dog. So it was, like, really sad. Well, it's every every dog death is sad let's be honest here but um and so it was weeks after the fact and my husband and I were on a date night together and we were we were coming home and I said oh let's check the mailbox and we went to the mailbox and it was like we're so sorry for your loss with the paw print of Scrappy and we were just like oh my god like the mailbox yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like all over again so this time they told us about the paw print so we know what's coming now <laughs> yeah we can bury is it the Boyd vet <laughs> No, our our vet is is the Green Bank Animal Hospital. Okay, yeah, because that one's a uh, more emergency, I guess. Yes, on Boyd. Yeah, that's and where I went were... with Wiggum. Yes, and they have the leather couches too. So I was like, maybe it's the same place. <laughs> <laughs> I I would imagine that all the vets have some sort of room that they dedicate yeah. to the uh, the goodbyes. So. Um, yeah, they came in and they put her down and it was very upsetting, of course, to all of us. And uh, they took Becky away and we went home. So, um, so RIP Becky. She was a very mm -hmm. good dog. Rest in peace. Um, everyone she had was. like, she was a very good dog. Like my, my dad was at the cottage. I was telling this to Barrow earlier. And usually every New Year's Eve, my dad takes the dogs up to the cottage with him because he just always takes the dogs with them up to the cottage but anyways this time because Becky was um on medication and because like of the porcupining incidences we had in previous years my dad's been a little bit more nervous taking the dogs up especially on new year's because you don't want to ruin your plans with like anything happening or going wrong and thank goodness he did not take Becky up there because he literally would have had to 
watch her very slowly and uncomfortably like die before his eyes. That would have been a terrible experience mm-hmm. for my dad. So yeah. thank goodness for that. Um, so the next thing that I'll just chat about, and I'm trying to figure out what to do to honor the dogs of the past. So now we have like these little like paw prints. It's like a tiny little like canvas. It's like, I want to say like two by three, like centimeters, like just enough to like fit their paw on it. And we've got, we've got officer scrappies and now we will have Madame Becky's. And I'm trying to figure out, like I've looked online before with what people do for their dogs and there's different ways to pay tribute and stuff like that. And I'm trying to figure out what to do with these things. So I was thinking of like putting like it in a shadow box with like their dog tags, like with their name tags on it oh, yeah. and putting it like in the, in the house somewhere, sort of like it, it's, it's, it's hard because like, you don't want to, you know, make a part of your house, like this super morbid area. <laughs> A shrine. A shrine. I've <laughs> seen things online, like on on Pinterest, where people get a nice plant, and then on the planter itself, they put the dog's, like, uh, collar around it with their name tags on it. You could do that, and you can hang the little paw print. Yeah. Or stick the little paw print on the planter as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying to think of different ideas. They're sort of like, I wonder if we can look some up, because there's, like, a whole, like I said, like, there's a whole bunch of different ways that... Uh, can make a necklace (laughs) there's like there's super creepy stuff even for humans i find there's like super creepy stuff like my uh there was a good friend of my mom's once who carried who would wear her husband's ashes uh on her at all times i have a necklace with my brother's ashes you do do you wear it yeah sometimes yeah i think is it creepy i think Well, it all depends, right? It means different things to different people. Like, some people find that creepy. Some people don't. Uh... (laughs) I'm pretty sure Heidi just called me creepy. (laughs) (laughs) I did not mean to. (laughs) I feel like when I'm having, like, a bad day um, and I need, like, patience, yeah, I put it on because I'm like, okay. It's like a reminder. I need some of that patience. (laughs) Yeah. Because my brother was just always a patient, a patient, happy go lucky kind of patient. And yeah. Yeah. I've seen people who put tattoos of their dog prints like on themselves, like with their dog's name. I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, here's different ways I found a, a place of t- to pay tribute to your dog after they've passed away. So one of the first one is it says have an item of jewelry made. So that's nice. So it shows. A I nice found pen. a really cool one. Yeah. So it's a necklace, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it has like it looks like a little bead. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's called round shape custom pet projection necklace. Oh, so if yes. you look really closely into it, it's the mm-hmm. picture of your pet. Okay. So you don't see, see it cute. like from somebody just standing in front of you, but yeah, yeah it looks cool. Like it looks I th- nice. I think that there's like a whole bunch of different jewelry companies. It's kind of like having socks made with your dog's face on it and stuff like that. There's <laughs> like a, probably a bunch of different companies that do a various uh, types of things. So the one that I'm looking at right now is like from Etsy and it's like a little pendant again with your dog's paw print on it. And then you can put their name. Another suggestion here is create a memory quilt. So you can take Ooh. like their dog blankets or maybe their toys or something like that. And, um, or just have a quilt made with their name on it. Um, so that's like another thing. That's a nice thing to do for humans too. I know this isn't a human show, but I'm like, uh, I remember seeing a company that, cause people never know what to do with the clothing of their loved ones that pass mm-hmm. away. And I've seen um, companies that will take like their t-shirts and make a quilt out of it. And I think that that's like freaking awesome. Um, it says plant a tree or flowers in their name. So again, with like a little plaque with their name on it, which is like also a really nice thing to do. I think I'm all for planting trees. Yeah. I'm all for planting trees. Another suggestion is to donate your time to an animal shelter. So they said sometimes it's hard, like considering adopting or like, or looking at other animals again, but uh, animals are sweet. 
<laughs> right? You just fall in love like so fast with other ones. And it's not suggesting that you adopt one, but even just spending time with other animals. It's hard not to bring one home. Oh, okay. I, I would yes. find it hard. <laughs> So I have a colleague at work who who just decided that she would start like, you know, fostering in a program because she had heard that like some of the shelters, especially a pandemic, all the pandemic dogs that we talked about, even at the very beginning of the pandemic, that are getting returned that they need like more fosters and stuff. So she has already adopted her first foster. <laughs> <laughs> like within the week too. She's got this like super sweet, like all white, like shepherd. Oh. Looks like a G shop, except like pure white. Nice. She looks like so sweet, and she said she's like this. She's got the sweetest personality, and yeah, it mm. took all of a week. And she's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna keep her." <laughs> Foster fail. <laughs> and she said her husband's like, "Okay, um, I don't know how many more I'm willing to foster." <laughs> so um, that's another thing. Uh, uh, another suggestion here is compiling a memory box. So you can make a little box. It's a cheap and easy way. And you can put their toys or the blankets or just any keepsake items that to remember them by, which is super sweet. And again, it looks like there's a company that does one like a really beautiful job. It's like this beautiful wooden box. And there's like a little outline of like whatever type of dog it was. And then you put their name mm -hmm. and the date. And then it just said, this one says, um, Oh, Oh, this one's so sweet. Do I know what they engraved on the front? They said, Do dogs lives are too short. It's their only fault. Really? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It is. So That's true. Cute. Um, another recommendation here is it says create an outdoor memorial. So again, like, and it shows like, and I think I saw another company that does like little garden stones or plaques or whatever that you can just put in your garden somewhere where it's like an engraved stone again with their name or the dates or a paw print or something like that on it. Um, I think I spoke about this on a previous episode too. Um, the dog park that we used to go to, um, it was fe completely fenced in. And it's like a couple of kilometers, I would say, to walk the entire perimeter. And there was this one part of the fence where there was like a nice poem about like when a dog passes away or whatever. And oh, everybody yes. would put like the dog tags like on that part of the fence. And um, unfortunately, this dog park got tornadoed. <laughs> and damaged pretty badly and they had to repair the fence and stuff like that and I haven't seen like a new portion yet since I've been back have you been there Vero oh to yeah Bruce Pitt? did, did <laughs> they start it again yeah okay yeah there's a part of the fence and there's a bunch of dog tags and then yeah. there's like this like fabric type an image on like a fi fabric type fabric anyways yeah and it's a golden retriever and it mm -hmm. looks like Ralph. Oh, God. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's so weird. And like, oh. he, he's gone up to it like a couple of times. And I'm like, Ralph, <laughs> it's like your twin. <laughs> it's like your twin. But is this like yeah, there's a, a bunch morbid of foreshadowing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like. Mm. And I can. Re I, so the first time like that we got a dog and like went to that dog park because I'd heard things about it. I can remember the and the first time doing the full perimeter walk because there's trails like all like throughout the forest and stuff like that. Or you can literally just walk around the entire perimeter. And that, the first time that I came, I was like, oh, what is this? And then I started looking and reading the name tags and reading the poem. And I was like, oh, God, this is awful. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it literally, like, some of the things people write and, like, like the poem, like, itself. I can't remember which poem it was, but it's, like, one of those ones that, like, could break, like, the mightiest of, uh, like, hearts, <laughs> like, yeah. reading it. And, um, but, yeah, people would, some people would just simply put, like, their dog's name tags up. And some of them would just, like, write messages on it and put it, like, on the fence. Like, we oh. like, we'll miss you, buddy. Like, or, you stole our hearts and, like, all this kind of stuff. So, yeah, a lot of different things there. Um, another suggestion here, the final suggestion, is create a photo album. So that's another thing that I've done. This this will be my second dog that passed, but um, like I'm on social media and a lot of our families and friends are and rather, you know, for my close family members, obviously, that super loved Becky, I texted them and, and let them know. And um, but uh, I always put out an announcement. So I make like I, I have a little like uh, app called Photo Collage where you can put in like a, a bunch of different pictures and um, 
so I did that with both Scraps and Becky. So it, it's fun going through your phone and looking at all the funny pictures. And it's it is it's therapeutic too. Like I was sitting on the couch yeah. with my husband, and you know, like I said, we have two dogs, and um, Becky was very much my husband's dog, so it was very upsetting for him. And uh, but it was therapeutic for him to go through the, my phone because it was like, oh, do you remember this? And there was videos, and he always. Um, he always would let Becky lick him. She, like she liked licking people. I did not like that <laughs> behavior, and I would not let her lick people. But like she, my husband would let her go to town. So I I had like multi videos on my phone of her just like she used to just lick his head. Like he'd be laying on the couch <laughs> and she'd come over. And she, <laughs> yes, and uh, so we were watching those videos, and my husband was like laughing and stuff. And we were like, remember this, and remember like it's a nice way to like sort of like yeah. you know have a nice little memorial privately to yourself like we found one photo and it was when we had first got Becky and again we had two dogs at the time it was Becky and Scraps and we were going up to the cottage for Thanksgiving and my dad would always boil the turkey giblets like the innards like uh <laughs> to, to and in in a broth to make gravy with afterwards so my dad had boiled the, the turkey giblets <laughs> and left it like in a like a, in a pitcher outside on the front porch so stupidly with two dogs around because <laughs> all of a sudden my dad was like what happened to the giblet juice and we were like what and he's like a dog ate it your dog becky ate it, it but like this was a, like it was her first trip to the cottage he's like your dog your dog ate it <laughs> like how do you know it was becky and not scraps he's like scraps would never do that <laughs> so anyways so <laughs> my dad kept scraps at the cottage and we took becky home with us and when we were like i'm not even kidding you it was like a block away from our house all you he heard was <laughs> and then <laughs> the stench in the car <laughs> was like so <laughs> awful so it was in fact becky who ate the turkey giblet juice and uh, so, you know, we, rem we remembered that. And there was all these cute photos, like with her and the kids and stuff like that. We were like, look at this one, look at this one. So we, we got to pick out like all the different photos that we wanted for the photo collage. And then um, we made, uh, we I, I made a little tribute on Facebook. But yeah. even like looking at the final photo collage was like, you know, enough to bring the family to tears like all over again. So it's very uh it's very hard on the heart this is it's part mm -hmm. of an animal ownership we, yeah we and you know that before episodes. like getting a dog right mm -hmm. yeah oh and it's funny because like we sort happen. of yeah I know right like it's like <laughs> it's it's the worst part of like animal ownership even like you know the muddy feet the like, you know, poop incidences that you have, like all the accidents, <laughs> them eating like your food, all these different things are like funny stories, like like later on, right? But like the yeah. the most the most painful part is definitely uh, the end. And um, so with, um, I remember when when Scraps passed away, it was like a couple of weeks later, or whatever. And uh, my dad had said, uh, "You better not get another dog." And I said. I am 100% getting another dog. <laughs> I'm like, once you have two, you just got to have two because they're like buddies, right? Yeah. And uh, and uh, so <laughs> when I called my dad to let him know that we had to take Becky in, like he was very sad and everything like that. And then uh, the next day, which was New Year's Day, he, he called again to say Happy New Year's. And he said, and you better not get another dog. And I said, Dad, <laughs> we've been through this. I am 100% getting another dog <laughs> and um like we said in um in previous episodes I don't know if you guys heard me talking and again we're not doing this anytime soon but we had planned on potentially getting a, a Connie Corso for our next dog and I guess my sister had been telling this to my dad over the holidays and he said you better not get another dog and I was said oh dad I'm for sure getting another dog and he's like well it your sister was showing me that some monster dog you want to get. You better not get that one. <laughs> and I was like, well, it also, it. I, I hate to tell you this, but it also very, very well may be that one. <laughs> you better not. You better oh. not. So, yeah, that's another thing is like just when to move on, right? Like some people yeah. are pretty quick. Some people need a bit more time. And uh, so we'll just have to see, like, yep. uh, 
right, right away, my sister started sending me like ads for Kane Corsos. And, <laughs> and there was, and there was this one, there was a breeder in Ottawa, actually. And um, their write up was phenomenal. Like they look like very, like a very reputable breeder. And um, like, they talked about their whole process. They talked about what they do and the, how long they keep the pups with the mom for, because they find that it helps with this and that and the other thing. And they have them potty trained before they're ready to go home and they do this. And like, it was just like explaining the theory and the reasons behind. It. And I could tell that this person was a dog trainer. So um, I, I, reached out to them again I didn't want one of their their pups like we're not getting a dog any anytime soon but um I just said to them I said um we just lost our pup over the holidays um we but I noticed your ad and I could was very impressed with your write-up about your dogs how often do you breed um we will eventually be looking for another dog once our hearts are ready um um please let me know um if I could ask for your info, that would be great or whatever. And this person wrote me back this su such a kind message. They were just like, oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. Like we, we lost one of our other, other pups. And it was so funny because here she is like breeding Cane Corsos. But she said that she lost her little French bulldog <laughs> at the oh. beginning of December. And I was like, oh, my God, can you imagine a little Frenchie oh. like amongst like <laughs> giants? <laughs> like, so cute. Oh, my God. But I guess she, so she used to train and show French bulldogs. And um, so she was just said, yeah, I have training experience doing this, but I'm starting to explore like breeding options because she wanted to get out of like the dog show game because she didn't like the politics involved with it, mm. which also I found like um, very interesting. interesting. But she said, uh, you know, she was like, I'm so sorry for your loss. And I respect you taking the time to to heal. Not a lot of people do that and blah, 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 blah. And anyways, she gave me her her info and she said she was a trainer. I said, oh yeah, I could tell that you had training experience. I said, thank you so much for your information. I'll probably reach out in the spring to see what you're up to. But she doesn't, she, she's just starting as like hobby breeding. So she said she doesn't have regular like litters coming out. So anyways, so that's promising. She said if, if she's not doing another litter, she can uh, direct me to some reputable ones for the, for the Cane Corso. So good. We're, there's still a, uh, there's still like, again, we haven't spoken about it since Becky's passing, but like, but beforehand when we were talking about what our interests might be, like looking at our next dog, there's still a divide within our household. <laughs> two, two of us would like a Cane Corso and two of us would like another Weimaraner. <laughs> <laughs> the kids want a Weimaraner. My husband and I want, want a, want a big beast. Big beast. We want to try our luck with like the larger breed dogs. Yeah, yeah. So we well, shall maybe see. We'll get a Saint Bernard, and then we can <laughs> both have large breeds. Oh my goodness! Although I've met my first pot cake, mm -hmm. like true pot cake. Yeah, foster fail. <laughs> oh yeah, at the dog park, and oh, it... I'm like, well, maybe that's something I'll do. I know it's 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 tough when you go making the dis decision and even I'm questioning even the Cane Corso and going with a breeder it amidst like all all of these like super full shelters with like all yeah. returns on the pandemic dogs too right and I, I even considered reaching out to our breeder for a Weimaraner saying because like they are true breeders so they're putting out litters like every like like multiple times a year and um, I I know that they get returns a lot of the time too. So like even taking one of those returns and mm -hmm. knowing that you can provide them with a forever home, you know. Yeah. But uh, it'll be interesting. Once we're, we're gonna definitely wait till the summer because uh, my husband's a teacher, so he has the summer off. So that's a good time to yeah take some time take to train time. some dogas. Yeah. And uh, but oh, another thing of training. Oh yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, I was, I was just going to say, it'll be interesting to see with Becky gone, if uh, Gibbon, the Weimaraner, who, whose breed is prone to separation anxiety, if we start to see some unwanted behaviors without a buddy around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like another, like there, when people call and offer their condolences and stuff like that, once you've lost a dog too, and especially when you have two dogs, people are always curious to know how your other one's going to react. And um I've been saying this to everybody who's asked because everybody said, oh, how is Gibbon doing now that Becky's gone? Um, 
you, you don't really know, right? Because like, you don't know whether it's your, you're personalizing it. So like we came home from a dinner at a family uh, member's house the other night and Gibbon just did like a sort of like ran upstairs and then into the other rooms. And I was like, Oh, is he looking for her? But like, is he just doing that? Cause he's looking for his toy or something else. And I'm yeah. personalizing this because I'm still grieving the loss of my dog. You know what I mean? And it was the same with um, when scraps, uh, passed away and we had just Becky after the fact again like she there were there were some behaviors but again is that just my inter- interpretation of it so she would ask to go outside and she would just stare off like she would just sit there and stare into the horizon for like yeah for like a half an hour or whatever and I was like oh my god it's, I'm like oh you know you can look at that and be like oh my god she misses Scrappy and like oh it's so sad but like maybe she just like wanted to hang out side for for a bit you know (laughs) like it's a nice summer evening like you just don't know so um yeah those are things to watch out for too but I I think it always takes them a couple of days you know um but back in the summer our dogs were separated like my my husband took Becky up to the camp that he works at for the whole month of July and I was going away on a trip so Gibbon was with my my dad and when we all came home at the end of it it was definitely like a joyful reunion so I don't know if Gibbon was just like she's back oh my god I thought you were dead like (laughs) (laughs) you know what I mean so again maybe he just thinks she's like gone somewhere and is eventually coming back and I don't know if they have the brain capacity to even know that like she's like like they must know something's up it's just like to what capacity do they and like how are they going to react to it so yeah he it's might hard just to think say. that she's gone and that she just hasn't you know returned yeah he's definitely be, been glued to my side but again I've been you know a little emotional these past couple of days so yeah um it, it could be that that he's like tuning into so it's tough to say but anyways to um, anyone out there with a dog at the end of life or anybody who's had a horrible experience we all feel for you we Mm -hmm. love our dogs again the most horrible part of animal ownership is the goodbye part so my condolences to anyone who lost their pets during this holiday season and uh, to everyone else we hope that uh, they are healthy and happy yes Thanks for tuning in this week. And sorry to, again, my apologies for starting out on such a sad, a sad foot. <laughs> we'll, we'll get back at her next week. Yes. We're going to be yeah. talking about some Ralph training next yes. week. Yes. Yes. Hmm. Mr. Ralph. <laughs> Mr. Ralph. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in on Let's, Let's Boop Snoots. Bye. Boop. Boop. Boop.